We have another edition of Fun Face Off for you today. Today we're going to be comparing two bank-offered global bond funds. So we have the BMO World Bond Fund um, and the RBC Global Bond Fund. Adam, why don't you get us started on the RBC Fund? Sure. Uh, the RBC Fund is managed by Dagmar Fijolkowski and Subuchi out of London. And uh, the, the process for the fund is a little bit unusual. The, the macroeconomic direction for the firm is set by uh, a number of fixed income specialists and, and then sort of disseminated across the bond lineup. Um, and these are specialists in you know, emerging markets, high yield, corporate credit. Um, Dagmar and Subu will, will manage the fund based on those uh, sort of based on those macro recommendations uh, of which they're a part. And, uh, and based on the, the asset allocation that they decide, they'll go back to those other specialists to manage those sleeves. So for you know, the emerging market portion of, of the fund, they'll go to the emerging market specialists uh, to manage that area. And it, you know, so you have specialists working in their areas of expertise within the fund. And that's a little different from the, uh, from the BMO offering. Yeah, the BMO fund is sub-advised through Insight Investments, which is one of the largest investment managers in the UK. Um, the lead manager is Isabel, Isabel Lee, and she is really the manager of the fund. Although it's similar in, in that it's also a top-down um, kind of process where um, the first thing it would be duration that they'd look at, and then from there they'd allocate that duration to specific, specific areas. Um, she's the one who's deciding which securities. She'll go to the individual teams, to the emerging market team, to the government team, to the high yield team, the credit team, to um, get a sense of which securities should go in, but she's the one who makes the final call. And uh, the process itself is, has changed quite a bit um, um, since June of this year. So in the past, it was a fairly conservative offering. Um, the currency was hedged up to uh, at least 80% of the portfolio. Now that's changed to a minimum 10%. <clears throat> so it gives them more um, area to play at in the currency. Um, another area where it's changed is the benchmark. The, in the past, the benchmark was the City World Global Bond Index hedge. Now it's the JP Morgan Global Aggregate, which has lower duration, um, more exposure to higher yielding securities, some exposure to emerging markets. And again, it, it just expands um, where the, the portfolio manager can look for those, uh, for those return opportunities. Yeah, I, I think it's it's a good example uh, of of where you sort of have to use your judgment of of how much a fund changes before past performance isn't really very informative uh, when looking at the offering. Uh, you know, by contrast, the the RBC Global Bond offering, it it has changed a bit. Uh, you know, geographically, it was it used to be a, a very Canadian centric fund, and over the last decade or so, it's really moved elsewhere to become a truly global fund. Uh, now it's it's under 20% Canadian. They have a, a large bet in the eurozone, and um, you know it has represented some changes, but not fundamental enough that past performance isn't you know informative. And and performance has been good. Uh, you know, 10-year sharp ratio is is second out of 14 category funds. Um, so it shows that that they've done well. Whereas you really can't gather much, I guess, from, from past BMO performance. No, no, you can't. Um, although past performance hasn't been too bad, its 10-year sharp ratio was also amongst, amongst the best in, it, in the global category, in the global bond category. But you really can't, that really doesn't give you any um, insight into how the fund may perform in different economic, economic cycles. So um, yeah, in, in, in this case, investors aren't really gaining anything from looking at, uh, looking at the returns. Mm. Um, and one of the reasons the returns uh, are maybe different as well is, is because of the, the fees that the, the funds are charging. So the BMO World Bond Fund has an MER of 2.22, um, which is significantly higher than the median, which is at 2%. And uh, that's a lot higher than the RBC fund, which you know, RBC is known for, for offering lower, lower fee funds. Yeah, I mean, the, their fees are generally good, and especially in their, in their direct investing uh, D-class funds, uh, or D-class uh, series. In, in this case, uh, the MER is, is 1.04 in, uh, in, in their series D, and that's you know, almost 1.2% lower than, than the BMO offering. So right out of the gate, it's, it's a big advantage to the RBC fund, whereas the, the BMO fund 
would have that much bigger of a hurdle to, to justify the additional fees. Yeah, well, it just goes to show how similar sounding funds and both, you know, both are global bond funds and are, are offered by the banks can have very different underlying processes, teams, and, and fees. Um, for more information on these two funds, please visit our website, www.morningstar.ca. Morningstar's policy can help make quick work.